Welcome back to Media Mesh, where I give you my unapologetic and often unpopular opinion on everything from music, movies, news, reality TV, and much more as we go down a rabbit hole. And today will be no different because we're going to be getting into Miss Megan Thee Stallion becoming the first black woman to cover Forbes 30 under 30. So keep in mind, I am not a hater. Okay, I'm a congratulator. For me, I'm really all about trying to uplift our people in the best way possible. And I guess I've sat over the years and just watched so many people being celebrated for all of the wrong things and promoting all the wrong images and really just capitalizing off of the situation. So it's not just uh, Meg Thee Stallion or any other rapper you want to think of or entertainer that promotes foolishness. So she's not alone in this category, but I want to really just dissect this real quick because that's what this channel is all about. The intelligent dissection of social media. I just want to go into some lyrics real quick. Uh, this is from the song Savage, in case you, you haven't heard, but let's hear it again with me rapping it. <laughs> I'm that B, yeah. Been that B, still that B, ah. Will forever be that B, yeah. A, ah. I'm the hood Mona Lisa. Break a nicker into pieces. Had to X some cheesy nickers out my circle like a pizza. I'm way too exclusive. I don't shop on Insta boutiques. All them little A clothes only fit fake booties. Bad B. Still taking cash. P like water. I'm unbothered and relaxing. I would never trip on a nicker if I had them. B, that's my trash. You the maid, so you bag it. I'm a savage, classy, bougie, ratchet, yeah. Sassy, moody, nasty. Acting stupid, what's happening? What's B, what's happening? Eat me and record it. But your edge up, all I'm showing, ah. I keep my nicker private. So his AP, all I'm showing. Beefing with you, B, really getting kind of boring. If it ain't about the money, then you know I'm going to ignore it. I think we can cut the BS right there. So back to the celebration. <laughs> so this is the type of stuff that makes millions of dollars. You know, this is this is what it is. You know, this is how you get popular this is the type of music that our young people are listening to young women of course and if you're selling millions of records if you're influencing millions of millions of young ladies buy your music how else do you think they're going to think when they grow up they're going to consider that this is the norm this in fact will be the norm this is what's popular this is what's selling and then when you look back at it, you can see that she's excelling in life. She's becoming rich. She's making money by doing this type of, well, talking this type of foolishness. She may not be living that. Her whole reality might be different at home. You know, she has a boyfriend, if I'm not mistaken. But they have bought into, and let me just say her and everyone else. But our people have bought into this idea that we have to say the worst things possible on a record to sell to us that we won't accept anything less than what these labels and these executives are telling us that the people want to hear. It's like we don't have the ability to create our own narratives, tell our own stories from our own unique perspectives. When you look at us as a whole, there's some problems. <laughs> We experience some unique challenges that I don't think any other ethnic group in America faces. Of course, we go back into history, go back in time. We know the whole deal. We know the whole slavery bit, bit and all of that, but we ain't getting into all that right now. But we, we face some systemic issues that have never been corrected. So we've never really experienced that white picket house in the fence, not the great majority of us. Yes, of course, there's going to be plenty of families who did. But overall, you know, when you look at the projects and whatever city you go to, 
you know the makeup of that population. You see that there's division in the home. Well, you saw that they pulled the man pretty much out the home. You know, you've seen the feminism rise, which was created for white people, white women. You saw black women embrace that. And so now they're in a dominant role. And I'm not saying it's all men's fault. It's not all women's fault. I'm not getting to that. So don't make no stupid comments about that. I'm not pitting the black man against the black woman. So if you're going to comment, make sure you listen to this video in its entirety before doing so, because if not, you're going to sound crazy. What I'm saying is we are facing so many different um, challenges as a people, whether it's from selling drugs, from doing the drugs, from our music, our entertainment, just uh, uh, from, you know, the whole uh, feminization of our men. We're being attacked on so many levels and people are not even seeing the effects down the road 10, 20 years from now. What will the makeup of the black population look like? Everything is fine in a moment. So yeah, for her, yeah, you know, top 30 under 30 on Forbes. That's amazing for you. What about the people that you're influencing? So you got to keep in mind, these people are extremely selfish. These are chosen puppets. They did whatever they needed to do to get where they need to be. Now, allegedly. Now, we all know what Kanye said. He said his mother was sacrificed. He mentioned Michael Jordan. He mentioned a number of other people who mysteriously have people in their family pass away. So it's all alleged. I wasn't there. I can't confirm or deny. But I'm just saying. There might be something to it. And the end result is one person gets rich. What does that leave the rest of us out here? Not me per se, because I'm going to be good. But it's for the young people that's being influenced by these type of people. They're glorified in the media. That's all you see. So you cannot sit here and tell me that this will not have an impact on your children. And people say, oh, it starts in the home. You have to raise your children. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Until they go out on the block. Until they go to school. And then now they're being influenced by their peers. Yes, the parents do have a great influence, but how many kids get to a certain age where they want to explore and do whatever it is they want to do for themselves? I mean, we are raising them to be free thinkers, aren't we? We want them to be able to experience life to some degree and, and be able to make their own decisions based off of what you taught them. But there's nothing that's going to safeguard your child from everything that's in this world. So you can do your best to try to train them up the right way and teach them things like that, but they're still going to be influenced by whatever they have or whatever their focus is on the most. So that's why the schooling is so important because the teacher has a great influence. They with your children at eight hours a day. They listen to music. They watch TV. All these things we let our children do as pastimes to get them out of our hair. But I digress. Back to Megan Thee Stallion. And again, this is not directly just to her because she's only doing what other people have done before her. So it's not really a, an attack on her. I'm speaking to a bigger um, problem is that we need to start controlling our own narratives. We need to reclaim our own entertainment. We're the most talented. Let's just face it. Even from Little Richard days, you know, he invented rock and roll and Cornell. Right. So they, they see what we doing. And then they make a carbon copy of it or they just infiltrate what we're doing and, and control what we're going to talk about. They're going to say, well, you got to talk about this, that and the fourth. That's going to sell. There was a time where you could hear a, a, a wide array of hip hop music. You could have the conscious music. You could have. You know, little gangster, quote unquote, gangster music. You could have a, a array of things because everybody likes variety. There's nothing wrong with that. But now it's all one in the same. There's only one form of music that's being promoted out here. And you can thank, you know, Puffy for that, you know, because he really took it to the next level. And yeah, I was a fan of Biggie. But at the same time, when we were listening to these records, it wasn't, you know, it was, was what it was. It's was just like more for the lyricism, stuff like that. I'm not saying it was better or worse. Than what you got today but at the same time those of us who were smart enough to realize like yo this these people are on tv 
this is entertainment. This is not actually real life. So I'm not about to adopt <laughs> the practices that these guys are portraying on a music video, right? I'm not about to start going out here and hustling and doing all these things that's going to lead me into jail. So I'm going to use my common sense. I'm going to get up tomorrow and go to work. I'm going to listen to your music on the way to work, but I'm still going to do something productive with my life and become something for me since I'm not on TV. So all I'm saying is, when are we going to start demanding more from the people that's in the, the limelight? Or do we ever? Or do we just let it just go? Do we ever take a moment and actually write to BET? Do we write to these record labels? Do we go stand outside of these record labels? Do we demand like other communities? You say something about certain communities, the J community, they're at your door. They're shutting you down. With us, no, it's fine. You know, we sit back and just be, you know, so passive. You know, we're just passive with everything and that's why everything is just passing us by. Opportunities passing us by, wealth is passing us by because we're allowing ourselves to be controlled and influenced by people who only care about themselves. They are not concerned about black people as a whole. They're concerned about their own financial well-being. As she said, she's trying to build something. She's building something, absolutely. She's building a fortune. She's building an empire on the backs of people like you, not me. <laughs> and you know, better yet, she's building a future on the backs of the youth the young women who will be shaped with a certain mindset if they continue listening to this type of music. So again, this is not just solely about her. I'm just talking about these rappers in general. I'm tired of it. We need to do better. Until next time, peace and love.